Welcome to the Wellness Connection with Dr. McMinn. Dr. McMinn is Birmingham's wellness doctor, practicing cutting-edge, world-class wellness medicine at McMinn Clinic in Homewood, Alabama. Each week, Dr. McMinn interviews experts in the field of integrative wellness medicine. The Wellness Connection brings you the information you need to optimize your health in mind, body, and spirit. And now, here's Dr. McMinn. And welcome back to the Wellness Connection. We're here with uh, Misty Wallraven and uh, once again, our very special guest this morning, uh, Dr. Roger Murphy. And Roger's uh, talking with us about fatigue and fibromyalgia. So, Roger, uh, earlier you mentioned viruses. Uh, uh, is there an infectious disease com- component to fatigue and fibro? Well, certainly there is in chronic fatigue syndrome. Not so much in fibro, but certainly you, you could have that. Mm-hmm. But definitely with chronic fatigue syndrome, because what happens in these individuals is they come down with some type of uh, viral infection, the mycoplasma, and bacterial infection, something that takes over their body and because the, the stress has shut down their immune system. And, and uh, typically what I see in my practice is that many of the individuals will come down with, whether it's Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus or herpes virus, a general virus that you and I mm-hmm. and Misty, we've all been exposed to that. We either, came, you know, we had mono at one time or we were exposed to it. And we carry around that virus in our bodies the rest of our life. For us, it's no big deal. We have, you know, we take care of ourselves. We, we uh, don't have any trouble keeping our immune system sharp and strong, and so we can keep that virus from, from giving us any trouble. Those with chronic fatigue syndrome, though, they get under too much stress, their immune system becomes compromised, and now this normally dormant virus that should never cause any problems starts to raise its ugly head, and sure enough, now they start having all kinds of troubles uh, with the very symptoms of Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus. And they get what I said is like the flu from hell. Mm-hmm. That they never get over. Uh, so um, in your book, you talk about the HPA axis, Roger. Can you explain that yeah. to us, please? Well, I try to keep it simple, as in, and that's what I try to do in, in all my lectures and, and books. But the hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenals are three glands that really regulate the the, the body. And the, I use, I, I, the hypothalamus is really kind of like the robot of the body, the, the computer of the body. It regulates... Our, our breathing, our temperature, our digestion. I mean, you, you know, we don't have to think about taking 12 breaths per minute. We don't have to think about pumping 60 miles of, of uh, blood through our system every every minute. You know, we don't think about these things. Mm-hmm. It's the autonomic system which is controlled by the hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenals that, that, that does this. For most people, uh, that system works very, very well. If you're running up a flight of steps, you need to get more blood and oxygen to the muscles. You know, you, your heart rate goes up, and, and so you get more oxygen and blood to the muscles, and there you go. But when that system gets under too much stress, it starts to shut down. And when it starts to shut down, all the systems that it coordinates with, the sleep-wake cycle, the, the, the uh, brain chemicals the, you know, for your moods, the uh, endocrine system, the thyroid, the adrenals, these things start to go haywire, and then you start getting all these different symptoms that start to show up. Mm-hmm. And so this can often lead to what we call adrenal fatigue, right? Absolutely. Or adrenal burnout. Exactly, uh, yeah. And so tell us about that, and, and what is it, and how do you treat it? Well, adrenal fatigue is a, is a, common, deni- is a common denominator in both fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. And the adrenal glands are really our stress coping glands. They mm-hmm. allow us to be able to handle stress, be able to handle, uh, have stamina resiliency to stress. We're all under stress. But what separates those with adrenal fatigue from those who have optimal functioning adrenal glands is that those with optimal functioning adrenals, they're able to handle the daily demands of stress. Traffic jams, light, noise, all kind of things. Those with adrenal fatigue find it hard to be around loud noises in crowds. To they find it even difficult to bright you know, to be under bright lights, mm-hmm. to process information. And they find that the longer this goes on the more of a recluse they become. And so adrenal fatigue is, is a, a very important condition that has to be reversed in, in both mm-hmm. these illnesses, really to see some results. And um, how do you go about that? What is your recipe for um, getting people back on track with that? Well, uh, when I owned my integrative medical practice, at one time, as you know, I was on the campus of Brookwood Hospital here in Birmingham and, and uh, had s- medical doctors who worked with me, and we used... At that time, we used Cortef, which mm-hmm. is a good way, still a good way to go. Sure. Uh, Cortef is about one-fifth the strength of prednisone, so it's 
Uh, many doctors feel it's very, very safe, doesn't cause the side effects mm -hmm. of things like prednisone. Um, but over the last five, six years that I've been out solo again, um, I now use glandulars, adrenal glandulars, right. which come from the glands of, of cattle, uh, grass-fed, bovine-free, uh, sure. disease-free cattle. And I'm able to use these glandular over-the-counter products, and by using these, get in people's adrenal glands now to start to come on board and, and to be able to mm -hmm. uh, heal themselves so that they're able to handle stress that normally would sink them. And of course, stress reduction and Absolutely. getting a good night's sleep yeah. and good nutrition and all those things. Are, uh, uh, yeah, sleep's uh, the key. Yeah, good sleep's multivitamin, the key. Yeah, exactly. meditation, prayer, yeah. all those good yeah, absolutely, things. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, um, um, what about gut health? Uh, you know, it seems like Roger, the, the good old-fashioned country doctors used to say that uh, good health starts in the gut. I think they were right, don't you? I do too. It's amazing how many conditions mm -hmm. you and I can mm -hmm. impact. By just getting the gut healthy, absolutely. Just getting the intestinal system mm -hmm. healthy, it's amazing how many things: eczema, psoriasis, autoimmune oh, diseases, absolutely. all sorts of things start yes. to improve. And one of the things that I see both in the CFS patient, chronic fatigue syndrome patient, and the fibro patient, is they all have issues with their digestion and elimination mm -hmm. their their in, mm -hmm. intestinal tract. Um, a big majority of these individuals are taking antacids or proton oh, yeah. pump inhibitors or yeah. Nexium and things sure. and that compromises their digestive ability which then compromises their absorption ability so you find when you start testing these individuals that they're often low in certain nutrients. Uh, chief among those are the amino acids which are the building blocks of certain neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine and so one of the first things I do with my patients is I put them on a good digestive enzyme. I don't even yeah, I just assume. I mean, like, if they're over the age of 35, they've been eating uh, foods that are not really that healthy, and mm -hmm. you know, and so they're going to need a digestive enzyme. And and uh, so, absolutely, gut health plays a big role in this. All right. And so, what is? It? Yeah, I hear people talking about leaky gut syndrome. Yeah. Roger, what is leaky gut syndrome? Well, you know, we we think of our intestinal tract as being part of the body, mm -hmm. and, and and it is, but but really, that's our waste system. It's like going to your in your bathroom and you mm -hmm. you know you get on your potty and you do the business right. and you flush it, and it goes down this series of pipes and it goes whoever you know who knows where it goes right. we don't want to know right? right but once you flush it you don't want to ever see it again right mm -hmm. same thing when you eat this food the good nutrients are supposed to be broken down into very fine particles and they're they're properly absorbed filtered through the through the liver and into the bloodstream and then you use them. But unfortunately, if you have malabsorption where you're not breaking down your food, uh, you can have these big, large turkey molecules that are not broken down properly, and then they pass through the intestinal tract instead of being absorbed, mm -hmm. and now it's, they're leaking into the body. And now you're literally mixing poop mm -hmm. into your, the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. And this can create allergic reactions where the body now starts to release certain chemicals that are uh, inflammatory chemicals called kinins, which then attack different cells, different joints, and even attack the brain. So, right, right. you know, it can be pretty dangerous. What brings on leaky gut is yeast overgrowth, non anti-inflammatories, proton pump inhibitors, things that, that block the stomach mm -hmm. acid. Mm -hmm. So, uh, leaky gut certainly can play a role in these two conditions. Absolutely. Yeah, antibiotics. Oh, as absolutely. Well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, people on uh, um, you know chronic antibiotics for acne, for instance, yeah. often get yeah. that uh, gut yeah. dysbiosis. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting, this, isn't it, Roger? How you can uh, get somebody on a digestive enzyme that can help cure arthritis, brain fog. You know, yeah. it seems like a lot of these distant organs we don't think related to the gut, uh, right. uh, skin conditions, once yeah. again, psoriasis, you mentioned that. Um, so, yeah, 